again, I want to just tell you on behalf of my, my wife and I and our family, just Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, this is our 18th Christmas in Cambridge City, so we've now turned 18 years old, I guess. And uh, it, it's just been a blessing. We've seen a lot of things happen. It was funny. I was looking through some uh, pictures here the last couple of weeks of what our kids were little doing Christmas programs and how things have changed. And uh, it's just been truly a blessing and an honor. Uh, to be able to share the Word of God with you and to be able to, to serve you. I know I was talking with some others this week. Some kids were in my children's classes when I first arrived here, and now they're all adults. And uh, but, but that's been one of the great blessings is for me to be here for as long as I have been, to see everyone grow up and, and to be able to serve and watch families grow, and it, it truly is a blessing. You know, our, our series today that we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to continue talking about traveling lightly, and we're going to talk about letting go of control. How many of you, how many control freaks are in here? Any control freaks? Nobody's raising their hands. Come on, there's got to be a few control freaks in here. And I'm sure some of you that may not think you're a control freak, you probably are a control freak. Now, you might not be a control freak about everything, <laughs> But, but I can, I can guarantee, guarantee you, and I know I am, that you are a control freak about something. And we talked about last week how Christmas has a way of magnifying things, doesn't it? So if we feel down, we feel more down. If we feel up, we feel more out, more up. You know what? When it comes to control, the same thing's true. <laughs> if we're control freaks at Christmas time, we might want to be a little bit more of a control freak. And and so today I want us to look at, and we're going to be in Luke chapter 1 today, and verse, starting off in 20, verse 26, and we're going to read a story that we've all read a hundred times before, especially this time of year, but maybe a slightly different angle and a different way of looking at it than you have before, and that is with this whole idea of control. Now, if you start in verse 26, it says that in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee. Now, let me tell you, this is the backwoods of not just Israel. This would be like the backwoods of the world. Okay, this is out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, I don't know uh, what you would uh, characterize that here in our own country. I'll tell you, I was traveling out the, uh, this summer out toward Colorado. There's a lot of nothing out there in Kansas and uh, out through even eastern Colorado. So maybe that's kind of the equivalent, right? Just kind of out in the middle of nowhere, okay? An angel comes to a virgin named Mary. So we're going to an obscure place, and now kind of an obscure person. And in verse 27, it goes on, she was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph who was a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. And then look at verse 29. It says, Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Wouldn't you be a little confused and disturbed if an angel showed up to you out here in the middle of nowhere and said, Hey, I've got a, I've got a message for you. I'm going to tell you something. You know, as, as we're hearing this, this is what you could consider to be one of the great interruptions in all of history, right? I mean, Mary's probably got this idea of what her life's going to look like, and now this angel steps in and says, okay, wait a minute, because she knew something, something else was coming here. And then going on to verse 30, the angel tells her, don't be afraid, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. And then verse 34. So this most amazing message has just been shared. The Messiah has finally come. And Mary would have known of, of this Messiah. She would have been desiring for this Messiah to come. But she's confused and disturbed, as it said back there in verse 29. And in verse 34, Mary asked the angel, wait a minute here, wait a minute, how can this happen? Because I am a virgin. So she's trying to sit here and think, okay, wait a minute, how is this going to happen? How is this going to work? First of all, I'm a virgin, I'm not married yet, but secondly, 
This changes everything. This changes my plans. This isn't very convenient. This isn't part of my five-year plan for life. You know, in the next few years, I'm planning to get married to Joseph. How, hey, I'm going to be pregnant. How am I going to fit into my wedding gown? They didn't wear wedding gowns. But you get my point, okay? Everything was going to change in her life. And then she thought some more. Go on to verse 35. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. So he's saying, okay, this is how it's going to happen, Mary. Yes, you're a virgin, but you're going to have a child. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And so the baby will be born, the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. And what's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say that she was barren, but she has conceived the Son and is now in her sixth month. For, and I love this, for the Word of God will never fail. God's Word always comes through. And then look how Mary responds. I mean, you talk about information overload, right? <laughs> you're, you're just living your quiet life out in the middle of nowhere. An angel shows up, overwhelmed, like, well, you know, disturbed and confused. <laughs> and then look how she responds. I mean, just the, wow, the, the strength in her, you can see her, because she responds, I am the Lord's servant. May everything that you have said about me come true. And then the angel left. You know, there's another translation that, that says, let it be. Mary says, let it be. And for many of us here today, as we're talking about control, I think that's something we need to learn, is to say those words, to let it be. Let's say that together. Let's say it together. Let it be. Let's say it again. Let it be. We, we've got to get better at that. We've got to get better at saying, Father, Lord, let it be. You know what? Some of us, some of us here today, we are wound so tight. I've heard this saying before. We're, maybe you're wound so tight that you even make coffee nervous, okay? I mean, you're so full of, you're just so full of tension and energy and, and you want to control everything. You might, and you might think today, as, as I noticed when I asked you to raise your hand if there were any control freaks, you might think that this message today isn't for you, but I want you to know today that it is for you. Some of you want to control your kids. You want to control what they wear, what their hair is, what they're going to do in college, who they're going to marry. Some of you want to control your spouse, where they go, how they drive. We don't do that, right? What not to say. You want to control uh, everything. You want to even finish their sentence for them. Some of you want to control your friends, who they hang out with, and what your friends do. Some of you want to control what other people think about you. We see that a lot. I've talked a lot in this series about social media. It's so funny to me. You know, you get these pictures, especially this time of year. We see them on social media. Everybody looks all happy and, and crazy, but you don't see that like they were all fighting to try to get this picture. You know, there was close to, to being a divorce between between the husband and wife trying to get the picture and then they put the picture up and what do they put in the picture they put hashtag blessed you know with it um, you see I, so many of us are trying to control everything and the thing is is that the more we try to control things the harder they are to do so you know this topic of control has already come up in my messages a couple of times this year and I and I think it's important because when we've dealt with COVID over these last two years we have had, for some of us have really struggled with it because of this sense of control. We have a lack thereof, right? And it's really bothered us, and it's really overwhelmed us, and, and, and I know it has me. Maybe we can learn from Mary, where she says, let it be. Let it be. Leave it in the Father's hands and let it be. Because here, here's something that's so important. Desire to control is rooted in a lack of faith. I've shared this before, but I'll say it again. When you are trying to control everything, you are telling God that he can't do it. And so I have to do it. See, when you overestimate your ability to control, you underestimate the power of God. I mean, think about it. In essence, you are saying that you have more power and ability than God when you, when you try to control things. And, and that's pretty brazen stuff right there. So here's what I want us to think about today. This is the point for our message today that we learn from this story with Mary. And that is, is you don't always have the power to control, but you always have the power to surrender. You can't always control what's going on in your life. You can't always kind of navigate and make things happen the way you want to. But one thing you can do is you can surrender yourself to the will of God, just like we saw in this story with Mary. 
You don't always have the power to control, but you always have the power to surrender. You know, we might think that when Mary was confronted there that night, that it was easy for her. I mean, she's a virgin Mary, right? It, was, it had to have been easy for her to just do whatever God wanted her to do, what this angel asked her to do. But, but no, it wasn't, because like I mentioned earlier, this, had, this could in no way have been a part of her fut- what she thought her future was going to look like in her plans. I mean, she was only a teenager. She had these huge, she had these plans and dreams for her life. I'm sure that she wanted to get married. She wanted to have kids. She wanted to meet this, this strong, handsome guy. She saw Joseph and how strong and handsome he was. And let me tell you, he drove a really nice donkey, okay? So, so he really liked this guy, and he really wanted to stay with him and, and marry him. But all of a sudden, these plans changed. And, and like the word there says, she was disturbed and confused. Some of you today, maybe in your life, and the way things are going, you're a little bit disturbed and confused about what's going on. You know, a lot of companies, a lot of places are struggling, especially since COVID. A lot of, a lot of tough stuff going on in the business world. A lot of stuff going, tough stuff going on in our families. Relationships have been strained. I've shared with people throughout this is that we do have the normal relational things that are going on in our lives, but now what we, you know, and usually if we have this scale, peop, uh, the, the uh, stress level is up here, but now we've got this uh, under layer of COVID that's like raised it up even higher, right? So, so relationships have been stressed. Finances maybe for you are stressful right now. Perhaps it's a health challenge in your family or for yourself even. And it's really easy to get disturbed and confused. Now, when we look at Mary, we might think to ourselves, well, how could she have a problem with this message from the angel? I mean, she was going to have God's son, but you have to remember, we have the benefit of after, after sight, right? Seeing things afterward. We, knew what was, we know what's going to happen later. But Mary didn't have that. This was new, uncharted territory for her. It had to have been scary. And you know what? She could have chose some things. She could have chose to travel heavier during this time. She could have chosen to be bitter, but what did she decide to do? She decided to choose surrender. She said, let it be. Now, she didn't understand the whole plan, but she trusted that God had a purpose for her. And that's where we are. See, she was willing to give up her plans for God's purpose. She was willing to give up her plans for God's destiny. She was willing to give up her desire for control over things for God's calling in her life. That's hard. But she did it because she knew that God had the, had the best in mind for her and for the world even. You know, one time there was a little boy. He was uh, playing with a, this really valuable vase. He put his hand into it. He couldn't get it out. They tried and tried his father. They were trying to get it out. Well, come to find out that when they were talking, the, 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 the father said to the son, Son, make one more try. Try to open your hand and hold your fingers out straight as me and then pull it out. And to their astonishment, the little boy said to him, he said, Dad, I, can't put, I couldn't put my fingers out like that because if I did, I dropped the money that I was trying to get out of there. I mean, that, that's, but that's where we are, so many of us, aren't we? we? We put ourselves in these binds, like this little boy who put his hand in the vase and got it stuck and wouldn't let go of something. What is it that you need to let go of this Christmas? Mary let go of a lot, didn't she? Because she knew that God had better and bigger plans for her. Again, you don't always have the power to control, but you always have the power to surrender. Now, the thing with surrender... <laughs> the thing with surrender is that it isn't partial. Have you ever heard anybody say, I'm going to surrender 75% of myself? And yet some of us try to do that, don't we? I mean, that goes against the very definition of surrender. The idea of surrender is full and complete submission. And yet so many of us, what we try to do is we pick and choose where our surrender is at when it comes to serving the Lord. God is asking you today. He's asking me. He's asking all of us. What will you surrender? Maybe some of you, you can, 
You can surrender your family to God, but you can't surrender your money to Him. Or maybe, maybe you could surrender your health to God, but you can't surrender your relationships to Him. I want you to know today, if, if you're holding anything back, that's not really surrender. And it's not easy to do that, because our world's telling us the opposite, isn't it? Our world is telling us that you have to take things by the horns and control it. Christmas is a message of surrender. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 39, he said, if you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. And surrender, as Jesus showed, it's not a one-time thing. Going back a few years ago, back in 1989, that's when I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I was about, eh, I was about 10 or 11 years old, 9 years old, somewhere in there. And it was then that I gave my life to Jesus. And, and then I remember as I grew older, as I got into middle school and into high school, ran into the difficulties that often come with those years, right? Um, I kind of drifted away. I drifted away from God a little bit. Now, yeah, I still went to church, and I still, I mean, my parents, they made sure I was there. <laughs> but I kind of just was there in body only. But finally, back in, in the mid-90s, probably 96, 97, is when I fully surrendered myself to Jesus. And I, I've got a feeling that that's where some of us are at here today. Maybe at some point in your past, you gave your life to Jesus. You are obedient to him in baptism. You placed your faith in him. But maybe along the way, you've kind of drifted off. You've kind of gotten involved. Maybe it's you got involved in your family and raising kids. Maybe... You've gotten involved in your work, and you've kind of gotten distracted. I want to ask you if this could be the year, if this could be the moment in your life where you can rededicate yourself to Jesus. You know, it's not always easy to follow Jesus, but it's always worth it. I've never regretted it. It doesn't mean there hasn't been times where I'm like, okay, God, what's the deal here, right? <laughs> but I've never regretted it. See, when we surrender, God, God will come through for us. He will. Now, it might not feel like it at first, like it didn't for Mary. But she trusted when she said, let it be. She trusted that God was going to come through. I mean, think about this whole circumstance that Mary had to go through after this conversation. You might think that you think it was hard to sit there and hear a message from an angel. Think about how hard it got after that. It was only getting started. So then she had to, uh, she had to go up to Joseph and say, Hey, Joseph, hey, I just want you to know that I'm pregnant. It's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine that? What, what if that happened to you, right? Like, you'd be like, what? The Holy Spirit? Yeah, right. Thankfully, though, what did God do, though? He sent an angel to Joseph. See, God had a plan. Mary trusted. God came through. Think about the people around town after this all went down. The people around town are all whispering. You know, you know what they probably said. I saw his donkey over at her house around 2 a.m., you know, or whatever, stuff like that, right? People started gossiping and talking. And Mary had to endure that. But eventually people come to find out who Jesus was and that he was different, that he was God's son. When Jesus is 12 years old, he goes missing, right? Any of you ever had a kid that goes missing? I have. It is scary. I remember one time my son Josiah, uh, he was, we looked all over the house. He was about three years old. We could not find him. We looked out in the yard. We were all over the neighborhood. It was probably one of the biggest sense of dread I've ever had in my entire life. We finally found him under the sheets in his own bed where he had crawled up and fallen asleep. Praise God that we found him pretty easily. But, but it's scary, and that's what happened to Mary. You know, she was missing a kid, and where did they find him? They found him in the temple sharing the word of God. She had to let go of control. She really had to live out. It had to become more than just words. It had to become what her life was about. That is to let it be. Again, Mary is the perfect example to us. What does she do? She goes to Bethlehem. She goes to Bethlehem on a donkey while she is pregnant. That couldn't have been pleasant. But she did it in trusting God. She trusted God with the plans that God had for her child. 
And then if you fast forward, she even had to trust God in that moment as Jesus hung on the cross. She had to trust that God's plan was the best plan. You know, Jesus was even confronted with this himself. If you look at Matthew chapter 26, it says when Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane just before he went to the cross, he went on a little further and he bowed with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it's possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. And yet, what does he say? Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Let it be. You know what? The illusion of control is like a drug. It gives you a false high. It makes you think you've got it all together. But you know what? It ends up hurting you and it ends up hurting those around you in the end. One of the most freeing things that we can do in our lives is to let things go and to trust that God will take care of it, to let it be. So today as I wrap up here, I just want to again give you this challenge. Will you really believe this, that God can do way more with my surrender than I can do with my control? Will you accept that? Will you believe it? Will you surrender and give up the things that you are controlling? Mary gave us a great example of what can happen. And God, even to this day, here we are, what, 2,000 years later, and we're still talking about her and her faithfulness. God can do the same through you. But we have to say, let it be.